Hello everyone. I welcome you to this week's edition of Focus on African Women's Health, a program dedicated to promoting African women's health at home and abroad. If you are joining us for the very first time, this program shares the global message of Health for All, and we emphasize that African women must not be left behind in optimal health. My name is Dr. Olayide Ogoshiji of the School of Nursing and Midwifery, Western Sydney University, Sydney, Australia. Last week, we looked at the African Union um, Agenda 2063 and explored what that meant in terms of promotion of African women's health. We rounded up the program last week by throwing a challenge to each and every one of us to consider how we can be part of solution in eliminating various health issues that are reported among African women. Today, we'll be looking at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, also known as Agenda 2030, and how you and I can leverage on this policy document to promote African women's health. Transforming our world, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development was adopted by the General Assembly at the 78th anniversary of the United Nations in September 2015. But it came to effect on the 1st of January 2016. The agenda contains a total of 17 sustainable development goals and 169 target areas. Through the agenda, the United Nations seek to realize the human rights of all, they aim to achieve gender equality and target empowerment of all women and girls. I encourage you to look at the policy document, the link to which I provided in the summary um, on top of uh, this particular video. All the 17 goals in the agenda are integrated and indivisible. And you will find that consideration for women and their health cut across all the goals and associated um, targets. Meanwhile, there are two goals that distinctively related that as, uh, um, that distinctively relate to this particular program. And these goals are goal number three, which is to ensure health which is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. The second goal is goal number five, which is to ensure gender equality and empowerment of all women and girls. A summary of goal number three relates to reduction in the global maternal uh, mortality rate, rate and the assurance of universal access to sexual and reproductive healthcare services. Meanwhile, the summary of goal number five is elimination of all forms of discrimination, violence, and harmful practices against all women and girls. I would direct our attention to two very important implications of these distinctive goals to African women. Number one, available report shows that the progress made in the area of maternal mortality and reproductive health during the time of the Millennium Development Goals among Africans is uneven. And that maternal mortality rate is still high and access to reproductive health among African women is still low. The implication then is that this is the time for community health providers to develop primary health prevention strategies 
and work in partnership with academia and researchers for knowledge sharing. Number two implication is that female genital mutilation is a harmful cultural practice against women and girls. And this is currently reported in more than half of African countries. The implication then is that there is need for more awareness of the short and long-term health consequences of this harmful practice. And that no healthcare provider, no healthcare provider engages in medicalization or the practice. Before we round off this program, I would like to direct your attention to one you know, fascinating observation that I made in going through the documents. And that observation is that there are a number of areas where emphasis are played on leaving no one behind. As a matter of fact, I identified three core areas in the document where United Nations pledged that no one is left behind. This in itself has an important implication and this is in the fact that similar to Agenda 2063 that we presented last week, United Nations emphasis that no one should be left behind should foster our determination to work together in ensuring that African women, young or old, are left behind in optimal health. Next week, we'll be looking at the common themes that cut across Agenda 2063 and Agenda 2030. That is it for me for this week. And thank you for being there with me, Dr. Olaide Ogushiji of the School of Nursing and Midwifery, Western Sydney University. I really look forward to our time together again next week and until next Monday when we meet again on this program. I say thank you and bye for now.